Good morning, buenos días, bonjour, bonjour, and annyeong asayo. Welcome back to my vlog. It is 32 degrees here in Alabama and we are freezing. For some of you, this may not be that cold, but remember, we came here from Hawaii only two weeks ago, so we're still acclimating. There is frost on the ground. There was ice on our windshield. We could see our breaths. I'm all bundled up. I even have a blanket here with me. Anywho, today is day one of in-processing. I actually don't know how long it's gonna last. We've been to different bases. I mean, we've only been to Fort Drum and Hawaii, but uh, in-processing is a different, um, process for lack of a better word at each place I don't remember what it was like on each one but I know one lasted about a week the other one was just a few days some of them offer classes where family members could go and get certificates another place was just you know letting you know that um, this is how things work here this is how the local community is this is what you can do today was supposed to be infusion day unfortunately it did not get set up on time despite my best efforts and despite my health insurance's best efforts and everybody who wanted to help me but medical law has flaws due to lack of a local authorization i was not able to get my infusion on time and uh that's also due to his orders being cut so late but let's not go back to that i honestly don't know how long this is going to take today but i'll do my best to share the experience with you I hope you can tell in the background where it's stop number two. This is the actual in-processing building. Oh, he just went in. I was trying to catch him knocking at the door. All that orange tape or netting or whatever it's called is actually meant for the quarantining people coming in. This is actually a hotel area that they're currently using for in-processing. So people who are coming from different states, unaccompanied soldiers, meaning uh, they're coming by themselves, whether they're married or unmarried, they're just not with their family, so you don't get housing or anything like that. Uh, they come here to do their quarantine and then they go, whether it's to the barracks or housing or whatever they're getting. Oh wow, he's out already. Okay, on to stop number three. That was really fast. This was a little unexpected uh, since the first building opened at 6 a.m. and usually you have to do a really long line or wait long turns. Uh, he went to the first building as soon as it opened. Because they were so quick at the last two buildings, we're already ready for the third, but it doesn't open until 7.30. So we're just gonna sit here for half an hour well, this was a huge fail, but also a bit of a wake-up call. I've actually been home for the past three and a half hours because my husband dropped me off due to a surprise, pretty awful cramping that I experienced in the car before the offices opened. This thing is so high up. While we were waiting in the car for the building to open at 7.30, I was experiencing some cramping in my lower abdomen. And I thought, well, it's around that time of the month, so maybe it's that. But once I started passing gas and the pain started becoming more and more intense, I told him, yeah, that's not it. I'm going to have to go home because the building still wasn't open, so I couldn't use the restroom. And if I had used the restroom, I probably would have been stuck there for a while. Just better to go through pain in your own home. Been there, done that, don't need to do it again. I just don't know what to expect and I suppose this would be the chronically ill part of the vlog, the particularly pertaining to Crohn's because it's so unpredictable. Both Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, that whole IBD umbrella, it's very unpredictable when you get a flare, when, when it is you're gonna cramp up, when you have to rush to the bathroom. What is it that you're gonna do in the bathroom? How painful is it going to be? Can you manage it? Can you walk around? Do you have to turn back home? Are you gonna soil yourself? There's so many questions when it comes to that. Everything just came rushing back to my head. Like, is it really gonna be this again that we get in the car and then I have to turn back and stay home? It was really heartbreaking for me because I was looking forward to sharing the in-processing experience with you. I'm gonna try to eat some soda crackers, drink some water. I have my medicine on hand just in case and just wait for him to get home. Can't talk long, I'm actually in the middle of a webinar uh, and I'm making dinner because my husband left again after he got back from his um, in-processing stuff to go get some stuff that he was missing from his packing list before the store closes. So I'm just checking on dinner. I'm gonna take this off the burner and I gotta go back. Not a video intro that I would ever really do, but hi, we're here. 
Uh, I'm in the restroom of the community center. We came here to schedule carpet cleaning and um, reserve the washer and dryer for us. All I did was walk from the car into the building and it cramped up. I had to stand outside for a little bit to pass some gas. When it felt better, we walked inside. I started talking to the person. And in the middle of our conversation, I had to say, I'm gonna leave you with my husband because I have to go to the bathroom, I'm so sorry. And I ran to the restroom and I had diarrhea. I will tell you later what this possibly means, but I just wanted you to see I'm here. It wasn't even like five minutes. Okay, now I'm home. My husband dropped me off and Donnie's received me because they're so sweet. Anyway, remember a couple of days ago, I don't know when it was that I recorded it, but I had explained that when I was at my worst with Crohn's disease, it would get to the point where I got dressed walk over to the car, and on my way to it, I'd have to turn back around to go to the bathroom because if not, I would soil myself. I wasn't gonna soil myself, but I already explained what happened when we went to the community center. My husband was so worried, I felt so bad for him because we were talking to the person, and when I said, sorry, I, I'm gonna leave my husband and go to the bathroom, he didn't even talk to the person. He just looked at me, he had this really weird face on, and he was like, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I just have to go. And when we got back into the car, he asked me again, are you okay? Yeah, I just, I think I'm going back to this whole thing of, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to keep my husband also calm because he's going to school and I don't want him to be worried about me and not focusing on school. I also don't want to worry my family because I honestly think it's just probably a mini flare like I've had before whenever I eat something I'm not supposed to or I go through too much stress. I think it's a mini flare and I have prednisone on hand. So if I need to, I have a week's worth of prednisone like I did back in January this year. And I know that if things get really bad, that'll really keep me away from the ER. <laughs> and I have an appointment for the 5th of January. So I'm, I'm hanging in there. It's only a week and some days away. I honestly think positivity, like keeping a positive mindset will keep my body at ease and really just take things as they come because this is nothing new. So I don't have to worry about, oh my God, what's going on? Oh my God, what is this? Oh my God, I don't have a medicine for it. Listen, I have a treatment. I have a doctor. I have a diagnosis. It's just a matter of getting things approved by health insurance. So I'm just gonna continue doing the stuff I was doing yesterday from the LinkedIn webinar and focus on things I have to get done before the year ends in just three days. So looking forward to 2021 and new things coming. Right, Luna? ¿Verdad que sí, Lunita? Queremos el año nuevo, mamá. Oh, sí, sí, sí. Oh, sí. Despite everything, we are actually at the community center again to do laundry. I reserved uh, the slots 2.30 and 3.30 because they're one hour slots. I don't know that other military posts have this. Uh, hang on, my husband's back. I gotta make a phone call real quick. This is the sucky part about office hours during the holidays. It says online that you need to call in advance before your appointment or your reservation to complete the sign-in process and then use the machines. There's nobody in the office. We went inside, uh, everything is dark, and it says that they'll be back because they're with a customer out in the field. I guess we'll have to do some recon with the laundromats outside if they have restrooms available. If not, we're gonna have to work out some other plan because I need a restroom. I'm back at that stage in my illness where I can't be anywhere that doesn't have a restroom. I always want to show you what we're doing. I always do, but I've been on the phone for the past 
hours. I don't even know how many hours, but it's been quite the afternoon and I and I can't show you anything because I'm using my phone. I definitely have to consider getting a camera. Don't look at me. He's looking at me. He's making a face because he wanted to get me one for my birthday and then for Christmas and I said no. When he finishes getting things out of the car, I have to call back my mom and tell her about the infusion calls. I gotta tell you about the infusion calls. But anyway, sorry. I, I'm doing such a lousy job at showing you how we do things and where we did this and how we got our laundry done and all the turns that we took and I was in the bathroom yet again after simply walking from the car to the third floor of a place where we actually use the elevator. I left my husband in the office. We rang the bell for service and I had to rush to the restroom. Fortunately, it was just at the end of the hall, but I was so annoyed. I was so annoyed. Then while I was sitting down for him to finish, I was perfectly fine. Then we walked from the third floor back down to the car and I felt like I had to go to the bathroom again. So right now I'm sitting in the car waiting for him to see where our package is that's the post office I, I don't know we'll see these past couple of days I've been going to the bathroom with urgency and then after probably two or three goes I'm fine the rest of the day I was able to do laundry yesterday I'm hoping it'll be just like that this time and we can still go out before going to dinner at five I don't know we'll see I got some message to take care of before we go package update it is still in transit. We mailed it to ourselves from Hawaii on December 8th. It is December 30th and it, their tracking number said it was going to be delivered yesterday, but today the update disappeared. So the post office said because it's coming ground, ship and truck, they don't track when it's going on the boat, only when it reaches a facility, which again kind of doesn't make sense because if it already reached a facility, it should have been scanned, but whatever. They said it's still in transit. It's not lost and it will arrive. It's just really late. And the post office is obviously really delayed between COVID, um, understanding staffing, mail increase during the holidays. IBD, IBS update. I went to the bathroom one more time, pain and diarrhea. I'm not taking my pen, pain medicine though, because I mentioned before, it gives me cotton mouth and it makes me super drowsy. However, since we are going to dinner at a neighbor's house, uh, I am thinking about taking my medicine before for heading over there in just three hours. The whole family is vegan and I told her about my restrictions. So she's making an avocado, uh, I forgot what it was, pasta or risotto or I forget, but she showed me the recipe and showed me a picture and she has in text what my poisons are. So it should be safe, vero safe, as my friends back in Fort Drum used to say. Anyway, right now, before we go, since I stopped going to the bathroom, we're gonna try to do that little outing my husband wanted to do. And then we're gonna head over to our neighbors at five. I might just butcher this, but the name of this lake is Lake Soloco. Soloco? I'm not sure. But this is this area in particular is part of the Wounded Warrior uh, retreat or something that they stay in that cabin right there. In this lake. <laughs> we're at the other side of the lake now. These are the other cabins. This is called West Beach here on the same lake, Lake Thalaco or Thaloco. I'll find out soon how to pronounce it. It seems pretty empty. We're told that people here typically go to Panama City for the holidays. There's only one wheelchair accessible uh, cabin that we've seen so far. All the other ones are just stairs. But then again, this is all we've seen, just these and 
those back there but look at this this is beautiful it's not hawaii but gorgeous still i thank my husband for this though because <laughs> if it were up to me i would not drive up to a lake it's just not my thing and thanks to him look at this how beautiful he was excited to see water lilies would you not shake this? You're such a butt. We're now at another area of this. I don't know if you can tell right there. It says West Beach Rick area from Lake. I can't pronounce the lock or the logo. From what I understand, there are different areas of the lake where you can do different things. So like that first area we were at, you could do jet skis and the motor stuff. We went to another area I didn't record that was an RV camping site. And then you, there you could launch boats and go fishing. They had a fishing fee just like they had a launching fee. You see here on the sign, it says that there is a swimming fee. So it looks like you just do different activities at different areas of the lake. That way you don't have the jet ski scaring away the fish so people can't fish. And you also don't have swimmers in the middle of fishers or getting hit by jet skis. So it was really well thought out. I'm staying in the car this time because I'm so tired between the diarrhea, the no lunch because of my diarrhea and, and all the grumbling that's going around. And we're going to the neighbor's house for dinner and I don't want to mess things up. 